All right, so this is another really fun part. Uh, you're gonna take, whoa, about a half cup of the dough. You just use the cup measure if you need um, some guidelines. You could make uh, smaller sausages. These sort of make kielbasa size sausages, but you know, it's up to you. And what you're doing here is you're forming it into a bit of a log shape. And it doesn't have to be perfect because really the shape is going to come from the foil that, um, here let me put this over here so you can see that. And again, what I love about this recipe is that it is not fussy, you know. So the important part is, however, to make sure that you use enough foil to wrap around a few times because I will show you in a minute what happens when you don't make your, uh, make your foil tight enough. This goes back to the seitan that ate Manhattan. Uh, because seitan wants to, this vital wheat gluten wants to expand. And when it is exposed, uh, when it has room to expand, it, it develops a texture sort of like a sponge. And then it tastes like a sponge and not like the wonderful, dense, chewy um, sausage that you're hoping for. So. Okay, so these, as I said, are pretty big, really. I mean, you could probably make twice as many, but it just depends. If you want to make little links, like breakfast links, like this box. But if you're going to a picnic and you want to stick this on a grill, you'll probably want to make it more this size. I have been to a lot of barbecues and brought things like tofu cups, and they have proceeded to melt on the barbecue and make vegetarianism look really bad. So I love these because you can actually take them, after, you, after you've cooked them, you can just take them and throw them on a grill and they can get all warmed up again and you can put them in a bun and they look great and they taste great. Okay, I'm just going to get one more, I'll do one more here. Again, if you have kids or grandkids, this would be a really fun activity because it is a bit like art. We used to form those little animals. Okay, and then you're pretty much letting the foil do the work here. If you, I'm using a little bit too much foil here, but um, if you don't want to use foil, and I look forward to experimenting with like a flower cloth towel or maybe muslin, but I haven't done it yet. All right, so we have made our bread, and we've, le we've left it alone for 16, 18 hours, and time has elapsed. <laughs> Actually, I made this bread last night, so I'm going to show you what it looks like after it's been sitting, covered. Um, I'm going to take the plastic off, and I'll tilt the bowl so you can see. It looks a little space age-ish. And this, you can see right here, is the are the gluten strands. It seems like gluten is a theme today. But what I need to do is to, now this is gonna show you how really easy this is. Okay, so we're gonna take this. It's gonna be a little bit messy. You can see it's a little bit stringy. That's why I put that big amount of flour on the counter there. Okay, so here it is, ah! And, I'm just going to flour it on top and bottom, and I don't have to do that much to it. I'm not kneading it. Remember, this is a no-knead dough. I'm just shaping it. So here we have a shape, and Jim Leahy uses wheat bran, but I didn't have wheat bran, so I'm going to use cornmeal, and I'm just going to toss it here, and I'm going to do this, and he says that for the purpose of the home baker, we just want to shape it a little bit like this. So you see you're folding it and folding it. And what happens is that when you put it back in the oven and you, you're you gonna flip it over so all those folds are on the top and that will allow the bread to sort of open up. It creates a really beautiful presentation. So now I need to get the pot out of the oven. Remember the pot has been 
heating in this 500 degree oven, so it's very hot, in order not to burn myself, which has happened in the past. Oops, I put the trivet back here. Plastic wrap. In order not to burn myself, I put a cookie pan in the sheet. So this is going to happen really quickly. Whoa. Stick that there. Shut this for the moment. And remember, I turned it over. Drop it in. Okay, now I need my lid back on top. And we're going to put it back in the oven for 30 minutes. And really, the only tricky part about this is not to burn yourself. So be very careful. The oven's very hot. So this goes in the oven for 30 minutes. And then after 30 minutes, we take the cover off and let the crust get caramelized uh, for 20 more minutes. But basically, we just have to leave it alone. So I've got these now. I'm going to be putting these. These need to steam. The one thing that's important to remember about seitan is that it can't really be exposed to boiling water. That When that happens, it starts to explode. That's what happened to me. So I'm setting these in this steamer basket at over boiling water. And it's okay if they're stacked. Just you want them to be straight. You don't want to be bending them. So this is where my ends are getting to be a bit of a problem. But I think I can make it all work. And now I'm going to let them steam for 30 minutes. And that's it. They'll be done. Okay, so our bread is ready to come out of the oven. It had 30 minutes at a, I don't think I said how high, how hot it is in this kitchen. Um, just make your oven go up as high as you can. Usually it's to about 500 degrees. Um, anywhere between 400 and 500 degrees will be good. But really, bread likes hot. So I'm going to pull the pot out and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here's the bread in the pot. Oh my goodness, it looks absolutely fabulous. I love this bread. And you remember, of course, how easy it was to make. And now I really should let it set um, and cool, but I can't help it. I want to show you what the crumb looks like on this. The crumb, of course, is like uh, the texture of the bread inside. And lots of air pockets. Really delicious. So there it is. You can do this. A four-year-old can do this. Okay, our sausages are done. They are finished steaming, and so we need to um, take them out of the steamer basket and carefully, so we do not burn ourselves. And what's going to happen is they. We are going to let them cool. Um, and then we're going to put them in the refrigerator and the texture of the sausages changes when it becomes chilled. So what I've done is um, cook some yesterday and so you'll be able to see the texture that they'll look like after they've chilled properly. And I wanted to show you this little example because I was trying to, I was experimenting with making sausage patties and I obviously didn't use enough foil so I got more of the um, the muffin top effect. And this is what happens with seitan when it's not contained. So it's just an example of how one of the very few things to make this successful is to make sure you wrap these things tightly. So now I'm going to unwrap this little veggie sausage. And um, having eaten many Boca sausages in my life, I really felt like this was sort of a magic moment that I made my own vegetarian sausage. And it's um, got a great texture. Compared to my earlier seitan attempts, the um, that were we were looking for a crumb in the bread. But we were looking for crumb when we make good bread and, and aeration, but you do not want that when you're making veggie sausages. And this has almost none. It provides in the vegetarian diet a really dense, chewy texture that's just a wonderful complement to vegetable and and fruit textures. So what you can do with these is put them in, the other day I put them in a kale and navy bean and garlic and onion saute. Um, I chopped in some veggie sausages. You can put them in a veggie paella. 
or um, a Brazilian fajuada, any kind of uh, ethnic recipe, chorizo, that requires sausage, you can now play with your own sausages. Um, so I encourage you to make these. They're easy. It's fun. You really can't blow it.